Hey YouTubers, Mike Martins here, Mike Martins channel, bringing another housing video. Let's talk about um, Ontario's housing market in this video. It's somewhat of important because it's experienced massive spurts in growth in less than 12 months. And now it's back to its where it was pretty much from 2016. They kind of removed 2017 out of the equation when comparing numbers nowadays. They're calling it an anom anom anomaly. So if you live in Ontario, you know what I'm talking about. House prices went through the roof and then they started to drop like nobody's business. And then articles and everything are sprouting up everywhere to calm investors, to calm people down. Don't worry, this is normal. Don't worry, infrastructure from Hamilton, uh, from, sorry, from Barrie, Ontario, all the way to Niagara Falls. Don't worry, condos straight right through. Hey, that's okay, that's all normal. So let's see what's going on here. Which factors could influence Ontario's housing market this spring? Experts give their take. You've probably heard plenty about the new mortgage stress test and interest rate hike are affecting the Ontario housing market. But these are only some factors that could affect the market in coming months. So stress tests went into, into play to protect consumers to make sure they could pay for the product or their mortgage or their line of credit, whatever they're applying for, if interest rates were to go up, which they are, and which they will go up another four or five more times. A provincial election, slippery debt levels, a surge, home buying demand, could all play a role in where the market ends up this spring. BuzzBuzz Buzz News has rounded up the latest commentary from industry experts to make sense of many elements that could affect the market this spring. So first one on the list, and this is one I totally agree with, that is going to affect the housing uh, crisis or housing market in Toronto is definitely going to bring huge problems to the table is peer premier Doug Ford could cut an important tax. It's huge. The Canadian proper will no longer be protected against, well, let's read, let's read it, okay? With a 21 point lead in the polls as of this week, it's entirely possible that recently elected PC party leader Doug Ford could become the next premier of Ontario. What would that mean for Ontario housing market? A potential rollback of the foreign buyers tax. So the whole purpose of this, guys, was to protect the Canadian proper from foreign speculators from buying up their futures, their kids' futures, and their grandkids' and great-grandkids' futures that are totally bought out of the market. People have to work with a six-figure income 20 years now to be able to put down a 20% down payment not buy off the house oh no god forbid to put down they have to work 20 years with a six-figure income living in toronto or the gta to put down a 20 percent down payment at the rate of inflation and the cost of living and then it goes into quotations here i believe in the market dictating Ford told the Globe and Mail earlier this week, the market, no matter whether it's the stock market or anything, it would always take care of itself, supply and demand. BMO chief economist Douglas Porter doesn't quite see things the same way. In quotations, it says, how can that possibly be a top priority, especially given very compelling evidence that said tax played a huge role in deflating the Toronto housing bubble in the past year is a mystery, he writes in recent notes. Yeah, it's definitely, even me, it's shocking me. But Porter is also quick to point out that removing the tax probably wouldn't shake up the market too much. The new mortgage stress test has already cooled things significantly in the first two months of the year. Porter speculates that the market will likely stay balanced if the tax was removed. But I wonder, what's the advantage? Why risk it, he asks. I, I don't I don't I don't I don't know guys. I, I don't 
even know why that would be on someone's radar when all you're trying to do is protect the Canadian proper from pretty much being bought out of their own damn country. Why do you think all the nurses are going down to, to North and Central Florida? Because they could pick up a house for another 200000 a nice house with a pool, like a four-bedroom, and still uh, pretty much have the same pay. But it doesn't really matter if you have the same pay or not because now your cost of living went down like 200%. What does it matter? Canadians have had... So, second point here is debt levels could be on their way down. Let's check this out. Canadians have had some of the highest levels of household debt in the world for years. The Bank of Canada consistently weighs this fact on deciding whether or not to hike interest rates. But according to financial analyst Hillard Macbeth, that might be changing. The Bank of Canada has said that notably households, household credit growth has decelerated for three consecutive months. Okay, that's three months. They've been building up for the last 10 years and then writing off these, what are these equity loans, the, these these lines of credit where people owe, their, their LTV is like right at the brim of what their home is worth right now. Whole housing going, what about the people that were 100% LTV on their second mortgage? Their second mortgage or 100% LTV, loan to value. What about those mortgage companies, secondary mortgage companies that were giving people 110% value last year? anybody remembers that 110 percent value of your loan to value on your house and houses went down 20 30 percent what happens to those people national bank economist says that when placed in context canada's level of household debt is not particularly worrisome Woo! In a recent note, Moran wrote that it's important to consider private debt in Canada includes crown corporations, while Bank of Canada also argues that loans between affiliate companies should be excluded. These adjustments alone reduce the Canadian credit to GDP ratio from 213% as much as threatening 117%. Yeah. A lot of the, the, the wealth is built off, built off debt. Heading into spring, BMO senior economists. Oh, um, sorry. Next point. Third point. Millennials are going to push up, push prices up. Last I heard, millennials have no money. A lot of them have no money and struggling to pay off their student loan debts. So let's see what this says. Heading into spring, BMO senior economist Sal predicts that Ontario home prices will start to move upward as a result of millennial home buyer demand. I just had to digest that for a few seconds because I, I just can't believe what I'm reading here. Then in quotations it says, The pernilarly harp per ennily hot markets of Toronto, Vancouver, largely driven by the impact of millennium home buyers creating price increases in the condo townhouse market here. They can't afford to eat. They're living with old people. And they're saying that, what? Hot markets of Toronto and Vancouver are largely driven by the impact of millennial home buyers creating price increases in the condo and town halls, townhouse markets, he writes. What? A crock of crap. They don't even have money to put a down payment down. Some of them are making high mid six figures, can't even put a down payment. I, I don't know, guys. You're going to comment below and figure this out because I, I, I must have been... Is this, this, is this thing from 10 years ago? When's this damn article? 
It's from today's date. I'm going to read this again because I can't believe my ears. My ears can't believe what my mouth's saying. Hot markets of Toronto and Vancouver are largely driven by the impact of millennial home buyers creating price increases in the condo townhouse market, he writes. What the hell is he talking about? Everyone left Vancouver. A majority of millennials are fleeing Vancouver. Tons of empty condos, tons of empty markets. I mean, tons of empty. I think it was, was it 40 billion in, in real estate owned by chi uh, foreign uh, Chinese investors in, in Vancouver. Was it 40 billion? I can't remember. And it was 22 billion in Toronto. So I'm not sure what millennials they mean. Could they mean millennials from other countries as students? I'm not too sure. It's not just Toronto that will be affected by this demand. Ottawa could see rising prices as well. We expect millennials to bolster other markets like Montreal and Ottawa as those looking for better affordability consider options beyond Toronto and Vancouver, he writes. Okay, so we already looked at looking at other options outside affordability. Um, the article I was reading to you guys, I think it was, was it yesterday? Where people living from the coast of Vancouver all the way up to the city of Hope, an hour and 40 minute drive, completely bought out of the market. Every town in between. Chilliwack, uh, New Westminster, every, like every city, all everything in between that is completely bought out. So you really need to leave like me, like I really left. I pooped the scoop. I cooped the scoop or whatever you want to call it. I don't know. This is a really bad article when it comes to forecasting what's happening in Toronto. Um, what they forecast will happen this spring in Toronto. A lot of people are complaining about pricing going down or homes selling for $90,000 less from what they were listed. A lot of people walking away for, for pre-constructions pre in Ontario. Guys, I want to know what you guys think about this one, man. Comment below. Let me know about this millennials thing. And what's the deal with Rob Ford removing that foreign buyer's tax to protect? What's the point? You know, I, I, don't, I don't know. I want to know what you guys think. Comment below. Thanks for watching. And uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button.